In this video, we're going to go over two approaches to problem solving, trial and error and sub goals. Trial and error is exactly what it sounds like. You're gonna keep trying various solutions until you find one that works. This is an approach that we use all the time to solve problems, and often it will work. However, it's important to note that trial and error becomes impractical if the number of possible solutions is large, right? Or it becomes not practical to try out every single possible solution. Okay, so to illustrate trial and error, let's take a look at the match problem. The match problem, you're presented with 16 matches in this setup, right? You can see there are five squares. Your task is to move two matches to form exactly four squares. Now, if you think about it, if there are 16 matches and you're moving two matches, there's a pretty good number of possible movements that you can make, but it's not so much that it becomes impractical, right? So you can just look at the setup and be like, okay, what happens if I move this match or this match? And try to figure out what the solution is. Now, of course, in this case, we're not gonna go through all the different possible trials that you could uh, use to find the solution. I'm just gonna give you the trial that does work. So in this case, if you take this match here on the top, and if you were to move that match over here, that's halfway, we can then move another match, let's say this one down here on the bottom, and we're going to move this match over here. And you can see how by moving two matches, we're able to form four squares, one, two, three, and four. So this is how trial and error works for problem solving. So next, let's look at sub goals. Sub goals are intermediate goals that you can complete that will help you to solve the problem. This can often be helpful because when you think about your initial state and the goal state, it might seem very far apart. So if you can set sub goals, it makes it much easier to solve. So as one example, we'll look at analogies. And this is one we looked at before. So supermarket is to fruits and vegetables, as pharmacy is to what? So for analogies, it's pretty straightforward. Your sub goal is to figure out the relationship between the first pair of words, which means we're gonna look at supermarket and fruits and vegetables and try to figure out what's the relationship between these two terms. And of course, you'll recall that a supermarket sells fruits and vegetables. Since we've now completed our sub goal, it makes it easier to complete the actual problem. So we're just looking for something that a pharmacy would sell, which would be medicine. As another example, we can consider the Tower of Hanoi problem. To remind you what this problem is, take a look at this diagram. You can see that there are three pegs, peg A, peg B, and peg C. Initially, there are three rings on peg A, with the largest ring on the bottom, the middle ring is the average sized one, and the smallest ring is on top. You can also see in this diagram that the goal state, or the final state, is to have all three rings on peg C, and there is one rule, and that is you can move the rings one by one, and a larger ring cannot be placed on a smaller ring. Okay. So what is a good sub goal that we can use here? Well, if you think about the final state, you know that the largest ring has to be on the bottom of peg C. So that could be your sub goal, move the largest ring to peg C. And if you can first solve this sub goal, then the rest should be easier. And that's exactly how it works. If you take a look at this diagram, you can see that you can take several steps to get the largest ring on peg C. And once you have the largest ring on peg C, then the remaining steps aren't too bad of getting the middle sized ring and the smallest sized ring on peg C. So you have the desired final state where all three rings are on peg C. Okay, so this shows you how sub goals can help you solve problems.